You don't need to be a professional archaeologist to make remarkable discoveries. Incredible finds can be made by anyone, anywhere, at any time. The thrill of unearthing history knows no bounds, and it doesn't matter who makes the discoveries as long as they're made. Let's explore some discoveries that illuminate the wonders of our shared history, reminding us that the past is still alive and waiting to be unraveled. We begin with a pair of Celtic scissors dating back 2,300 years, which were unearthed in a cremation grave in Munich, Germany at the start of May 2023. The remarkably preserved scissors retain their sharpness and shine, leaving archaeologists astounded by their exceptional condition. Professor Matthias Fiel from the Bavarian State Office for the Preservation of Monuments describes the find as very special and praises the craftsmanship of the object. The discovery occurred when a disposal crew searching for World War II ordnance at a Munich construction site encountered suspected archaeological structures. That led to the finding of the tomb within a square structure formed by wooden posts. It dates back to the 3rd or 2nd century BCE. This period saw the Celts start to cremate their deceased and bury their remains in pits alongside grave goods. Alongside the scissors, the grave contained a folded sword, a shield, a spearhead, a razor, and a fibula, all of which display impressive craftsmanship and indicate the high social status of the deceased. These scissors served multiple functions, including cutting hair, textiles, and sheep's wool, while the ritual destruction of the sword suggests a symbolic offering for the afterlife. A marble statuette of the Buddha was unearthed at the Temple of Isis in Berenke, Egypt in April 2023. Dating back to the 2nd century, it provides compelling archaeological evidence of Buddhism's presence in ancient Egypt. The Roman-era harbors along Egypt's Red Sea coast, particularly Berenke, played a vital role in trade between the Roman Empire and India. Ships from India brought various goods to Berenke, including pepper, textiles, semi-precious stones, and ivory. The newly discovered Buddha statue standing 28 inches tall was found in the temple's forecourt. Its intricate craftsmanship showcases the figure holding his draped robe and adorned with a halo symbolizing his radiant mind. A lotus flower representing purity grows by his foot. The marble used for the statue was of exceptional quality and sourced from a quarry south of Istanbul. Local artisans in Berenke crafted the sculpture, which was likely obtained by an Indian trader as a votive offering for the Temple of Isis. In addition to the statue, archaeologists uncovered two second-century coins from the central Indian Sadavahana dynasty and a Sanskrit inscription dating to the reign of Emperor Philip the Arab. The Crown of Bilge Khan a magnificent golden crown was unearthed at the Bilge Khan complex in Kashu Tasidam, Mongolia in 2001. Dating back to the 6th to 8th centuries during the Central Asian Second Turkic Khaganate, this crown showcases the exceptional craftsmanship of a brilliant but sadly anonymous local artist. Discovered alongside a golden belt, it's believed to have belonged to Bilge Khan himself. The crown bears a resemblance to the headgear depicted in the bust of Koltigan, possibly representing Bilge's brother. Excavations of the complex revealed a structure with inscriptions and war scenes where the crown was found surrounded by silver flowers, silver deer statues, and other valuable objects. The crown is made of thin sheets of gold with five upright panels, featuring a phoenix and intricate flower motifs. With small perforations, it's believed to have been attached to another item, possibly a hat. Following restoration, the crown of Bilge Khan is now on display at the National Museum of Mongolia, showcasing the rich cultural heritage and metallurgical skills of the Eastern Turks in Central Asia. The most notable of the silver deer it was found with accompanies it in the display. Archaeologists in Germering, Germany made a fantastic discovery in January 2023 a Bronze Age well filled with ritual offerings, which is believed to be over 3,000 years old. The well is incredibly well preserved, with its wooden walls still partly damp from the groundwater. This has ensured that the organic materials discovered within it have been equally well preserved, including a total of 26 bronze garment pins, amber beads, two metal spirals, 
an animal tooth wrapped in metal to make a pendant, and over 70 ceramic vessels. The condition of the vessels indicates that they were carefully lowered in the water rather than dropped or thrown. As such, it's thought that they were part of an offering to the gods made during a time of drought when the water table had dropped significantly. The hardships faced by the settlers at that time may have spurred them to sacrifice their most valuable possessions to their gods in the hope that their fortunes might improve. As part of the ongoing archaeological dig at the site, around 13,500 artifacts have been made, mainly from the Bronze Age and Early Middle Ages. It's expected that some of these finds will be made accessible to the public later this year in the Germering City Museum. Discovering ancient artifacts allows us to delve into the lives and beliefs of those who came before us. One such fascinating relic is the Antiochus Cylinder, a captivating piece dating back to approximately 250 BCE. Crafted by the mighty Antiochus Soter, a Greek king of the Seleucid Empire, this devotional cylinder, written in traditional Akkadian, unveils the grandeur of his reign. As we read the translated text, we're transported to a time when Antiochus, the powerful king of Babylon and ruler of numerous lands, sought to leave his mark on history. With his own hands, so it's claimed, he molded the bricks that would lay the foundation of the majestic temples, Esagila and Ezida. Through his devotion to Nabu, the wise and esteemed god, Antiochus yearned for prosperity, triumph over his enemies, and a legacy that would endure. The Antiochus Cylinder not only reveals his ambitions and piousness, but also provides a glimpse into the ancient world where kings and gods held immense power and dreams were etched in the annals of time. Should we take the text at face value? Absolutely not, but the people ruled by Antiochus would have been expected to. Imagine standing in the awe-inspiring Bimean Valley gazing up at the colossal Buddhas that once graced the cliffs with their serene presence. These towering figures carved into the mountainside over 1,500 years ago were a testament to the rich cultural heritage of the region. The Buddhas of Bamiyan, located in present-day Afghanistan, stood as magnificent symbols of Buddhism's influence along the ancient Silk Road. One stood at a staggering height of 160 feet, while the other reached an impressive 120 feet. These majestic statues, adorned with vibrant colors and intricate details, were marvels of artistry and devotion. They witnessed the rise and fall of empires, the passage of time, and the ebb and flow of human history. Tragically, their legacy was shattered in 2001 when they were targeted and destroyed by the hands of ignorance and intolerance, the terrorist cowards of the local Taliban who ordered their destruction. Despite their physical absence, the spirit of the Buddhas of Bamiyan endures, reminding us of the enduring power of art, faith, and the need to protect and cherish our shared cultural heritage. Restoration projects have been discussed, but have thus far come to nothing. The Turin Papyrus map is often described as the oldest surviving topographical and geological map in the world. Unearthed in Deir el Medina and now housed in Turin's Museo Egezio, this masterpiece was crafted over 3,100 years ago during the reign of Ramses IV by Amenakte, the esteemed scribe of the tomb. It reveals the enchanting landscape of the Egyptian eastern desert, with the Nile gracefully winding through its lands. The map accurately depicts the course of the Wadi Hammamet, the Beckenstone Quarry, and the settlement of Bir Um Fakir. Its geological significance lies in the representation of diverse rock types with brown, green, and white dots. Remarkably, this ancient artifact showcases early paper folding techniques, challenging the notion that papyrus is brittle even when it's newly made. It was discovered in fragments by agents of French consul Bernardino Dravetti in Egypt in 1814 and painstakingly reassembled between then and 1821. Dravetti was an avid collector of Egyptian artifacts, so reassembling the map was likely to have been a labor of love. While older maps than this exist elsewhere in the world, they're far cruder and lack the topographical detail of this one. It isn't hard to work out why the Tel al-Ubaid copper lintel is so named. 
It was found in the ancient Sumerian city of Tel al Abaid in what's now Iraq. In 1919, the renowned British archaeologist Henry Hall unearthed this extraordinary metal sculpture at the base of a mud and brick temple foundation. The temple, dedicated to the goddess Ninhursag, stood near the legendary royal city of Ur. The copper panel, believed to have adorned the temple entrance, would have featured prominently in the field of view of the congregation at the temple. Despite its fragile state, skilled conservators diligently restored the lintel, revealing its stunning details. The restored relief showcases the powerful figure of Imdagud, a lion-headed eagle representing the god Ningirsu flanked by majestic stags, one of which required careful attention from experts. The sheer size and preservation of this copper artwork defy the odds, as most metal artifacts from ancient times were melted down for their raw materials. In fact, it's one of the largest surviving metal sculptures of its era, anywhere in the world, with an estimated age of 4,400 years. It's an extraordinary testament to the artistic legacy of Mesopotamia. The Forsbrook Pendant is an Anglo-Saxon jewelry piece discovered in Forsbrook, Staffordshire, England, and acquired by the British Museum in 1879. It consists of a 7th century setting for a 4th century gold Roman coin in gold cellwork with garnet and blue glass inlays. Measuring barely 1.4 inches in diameter, the pendant features the coin surrounded by a circular frame of cloisonne gold, garnet, and blue glass with animal head motifs on the suspension loop. Similar pendants setting Roman or Byzantine coins are known to have been predominantly worn by women. Anglo-Saxon jewelry of that period often incorporated flat-cut almondine garnets, red garnet cloisonne, and occasionally glass in blue and green. The Forsbrook pendant's gold foil backing enhances the reflection of light through the garnet slices. Its chemical analysis reveals a similarity to Roman-colored glass, suggesting the reuse of Roman opaque glass in Anglo-Saxon craftsmanship. The pendant's discovery by a laborer in Staffordshire led to its acquisition by the British Museum, where it remains on display alongside other remarkable pendants with gold coin solidus and garnet cloisonne settings. It's been suggested a pattern on the pendant could be a zoomorphic interpretation of a traditional Roman laurel wreath but that might be wishful thinking. Bernard Castle became famous in England in 2020 because of an absurd statement made by a government official about why he was caught breaking lockdown conditions. By rights, it should be more famous for being the place where you'd find a one-of-a-kind automation known as the Silver Swan, which is inside the castle's Bose Museum. Silver Swan is a perfectly accurate description of the artifact's appearance but it doesn't really do it justice. The museum's founder, John Bowes, purchased the automation from a jeweler in Paris in 1872. It's life-size, driven by clockwork, contains a music box, and sits on a bed of glass roads and beads designed to look like a sparkling stream. When its mechanism is wound, the music plays, and the glass rods in the stream rotate, thus giving the illusion of movement. At the same time, the swan preens itself and turns its head from side to side before bending down to catch fish swimming in the stream. It's thought that the swan was built by James Cox and John Joseph Merlin in 1773 and spent time in London before being sold to the Parisian dealer. Originally, it had a waterfall behind it, but it was stolen while the swan was being exhibited in the 19th century. Most of us know what a head lice comb looks like through bitter experience, whether that's as a child or with our children. Lice combs have looked the same throughout history. Here's one of the oldest ones archaeologists have ever found, one that bears an inscription which might be the oldest in the world. The comb and its inscription were found at a 4,000-year-old site in Israel that was once Lachish, a Canaanite city-state. It's made of ivory, and the words scratched onto its surface are written in the oldest known alphabet. It says, May this tusk root out the lice of the hair and the beard, which is, of course, precisely what a lice comb is intended to do. Deciphering and translating the letters on the artifact took Israeli archaeologists and experts an entire year, with the findings reported in November 2022. 
The Canaanite script is the oldest alphabet that exists in the historical record, and translating it is a slow and difficult task because our understanding of it is imperfect. Microscopic examination of the comb has revealed the presence of head lice in their nymph stage, so the comb was effective. Let's finish with the Garima Gospels. They're a pair of Ethiopic gospel books, one of which is thought to be the oldest surviving illustrated Christian manuscript in the world. People have taken to calling the Gospels the Ethiopian Bible. There's reason to believe the Gospels were created together in the year 500, but one of the two might be even older than that. Radiocarbon dating suggests that Garima 1 was written and bound somewhere between 530 and 660, whereas Garima 2 is more likely to come from somewhere between 390 and 570. Prior to the carbon dating tests, Western scholars had dismissed the Gospels as unimportant products of the 12th century. Today, they're both held in the Abba Garima Monastery in Ethiopia, where it's claimed that they've never left the monastery. Again, though, there's some doubt about that. The area around the monastery was occupied by Muslims between the 9th and 14th centuries, and it seems unlikely that the Gospels would have survived that period unless they were taken away from the monastery and hidden. Regardless of how they survived, they're the oldest virginal witnesses to the early Byzantine text of the Gospels and also the oldest surviving Ethiopian manuscripts of any description. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.